So welcome. I already see the first familiar faces. We will wait some minutes until everybody has a chance to connect, probably. But for everybody already entered the call, yeah, you will see our first survey because we would like to know a little bit more about you. So please feel free to answer the survey so that we know who is on that call together with us. So the, to start with the first question, and that's a good thing because we want um, this today to be in very interactive format. Yes, we will record this session and we will upload it as a video later on. So um, please don't see it as excuse to leave after five minutes. We're happy if you stay on board, but we will have a video recording afterwards also. Oh. Mm. Okay, I don't see so many people at this point in the waiting room, so, so let's start. So welcome everybody. Um, you found the way to the third installment of our Game Starter event series. And so what we want to do with this Game Starter event by Game City Hamburg <coughs> is to like, get an idea of what it is like to work in the games industry. And so we are looking at different kind of job profiles and um, with every event we have like experts actually working in that job. And so we want to enable career starters to get a better understanding. How is it like? How can I enter this kind of position in the industry? But what we also want to do is get like the be best practices of people who are actually working in this job. So what we want to do today uh, in this meeting here together is that we find out um, yeah, what, what is your interest. So Anna, could you please switch one slide back? Yeah, so this is some housekeeping stuff we would like to share with you. So um, this Game Starter event will be recorded and we will upload the video later on. Um, also, um, I see most of you already did it, um, but it would be super if you could unmute your microphones and please feel free to use the chat at any time. We will always scan the chat for your questions and bring them in um, because as I already said, you have so many videos out in the internet where you can learn a lot about community management, um, but please feel free to bring all your questions in here because we want to have a very interactive format. And um, so that's not mandatory, but we are happy if some of you turn on the camera, um, so as you like, but it's always nice for us to get some reactions because it also helps us to see, okay, are we heading in the right direction? Are you interested? Um, are you bored? Um, so, so what's up there? All right, so at this point, uh, so, so last thing, um, as Sinica, could, could you un unmute for, for, for a sec at this point? Unmute? Oh, oh, no, 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 it's fine. I, I only wanted to point out uh, that, that we all can, can hear you also. So, um, so, so, so last uh, housekeeping uh, stuff um, is uh, we also have like a Discord channel from Game City Hamburg and we have a dedicated Game Starter channel there. So also please feel free to head over afterwards and you can also post your questions later on there. All right. Um, then let's jump in direct into today's topic. So right now, we are in the middle of a short welcoming. So um, my name is Dennis, I'm the project lead 
of Game City Hamburg. And um, also on this call today are my three colleagues from Game City Hamburg. So this is Anna, Annika, and Maggie. And Maggie is also your co-host for today. And yeah, we all will scan the chat and are happy to bring all your questions in. Um, but we are only able to do this event today with, with our experts here, um, because we want to learn more about their jobs and about their approach to community management. So yeah, we will have the introduction in a second. And um, then later on, we will have a QR. Um, but as I said, you can bring in your questions at any point. But before we will uh, start with the introduction of our today's experts, uh, I would like to take a look together with you on the results of our first survey so that we get to know you a little bit better. So we asked, uh, do you work in community management? And so the answers here, 30% um, I don't work in community management, 23 I work as full-time community manager. So we have lots of experts also here in this call and also feel free to bring in your uh, insights and your approach um, to everything we will discuss. Um, lots of you also answered, I do a bit of community management, but that's not my main profession. And also we have some interested in working in this uh, profession, um, yeah, but don't uh, at this point. So quite a mix, but as I said, um, we will try to cover everything um, you could be interested in mm -hmm. here. So, um, yeah, let's introduce our experts for today. So we are very happy uh, that you took the time and that you're here. And yeah, let's start uh, with Caro. So um, please tell us a bit about your company and your role in it. And please let us know what do you work on right now? Hi everyone, I'm Caro or Caroline. I am the community manager for German speaking countries at CD Projekt Red. So for Germany, Austria and Switzerland for all the games we do. So for Cyberpunk 2077, for the Witcher games, for Thronebreaker and for Gwent. And in the company, as you can imagine, at the moment, we're mostly focusing on the release of Cyberpunk. That takes most of my time and energy, but of course, I'm also working on the Gwent community since it's a live game and doing some things for Witcher here and there. So it's a wide mix of things. And full disclosure here at this point, so the Game City Hamburg team went in some trouble to write the name of the company correctly. And that's amazing <laughs> uh, that yes. we managed to, to write CD Projekt. Um, yeah, it's so not CD Projekt, right? <laughs> it's not CD Projekt, it's, uh, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, I also, I like the way you pronounce it. So, so yeah, it's, that's the yeah. one benefit of being German in a Polish company. So <laughs> Projekt is very easy to pronounce. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, happy that you're here today. Um, so the next one, the next expert on our panel is Gabriela and um, you're working at Gamigo. Please also tell us a little bit about your company and what you're working on right now. Yeah, hi, I'm Gabby. Um, I am team lead for community management for in-house client games in Hamburg. I work at Gamigo and um, well, we have a lot of free-to-play games, a lot of client games, some browser games. I um, take care of client games. And um, currently, I'm working on a lot of different smallish things. So reworking our Discord, for example, um, reworking how we can hand out rewards for events, um, just some, some small systems. We are also working on a few big things, which unfortunately I cannot tell you about. Um, but just as a small hint, Gamigo is turning 20 years this year. So keep your eyes open. Okay, amazing. 20 years. That's, that's quite a, a time in, in our fast moving industry. Um, yeah, happy to find out uh, what, what you learned in, in, in your time there and what you're up to in the future. Uh, so the next one on our panel is Sebastian and you're working at Good Game Studios. And yeah, please also um, share some insights about Good Game with us and what you are working on right now. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Nice to meet you all. I'm Sebastian, 37 years old. I'm around about 12 years in the industry now. 
Um, currently, I'm taking care of six live operations projects here at Good Game Studios, including Good Game Empire, Empire for Kingdoms, and also Big Farm. Uh, my title is director here, MNPR. You may wonder why not just ZM. Um, ZM is uh, moving a lot in a lot of other kind of professions, including in all of that. And therefore, here at GGS, we are moving more into uh, customer relationship management if you're speaking about community management as well. Um, <laughs> Also taking a bit care of PR. Yeah, um, on top of that, a bit about Good Game Studios. We are a free-to-play developer and publisher of games, kind of obvious. Um, we are developing games from mobile and browser mostly. Um, we have peeps from around about 40 nations here in the office. And we are founded 2009 in Hamburg. That's round about everything about Good Game so far. Okay, thank you very much. And then our next expert for today is Sinica and also from, from a Hamburg-based company. So please also share some words about uh, Moon Eye Studios and what you are working on right now. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sinica. Uh, Moon Eye Studios is a five-headed team in Hamburg. Um, we released our first game, Lost Ember, last year in November. Um, and we're releasing on Switch in two days. So oh. that's pretty much what I'm working on right now. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, then let's jump right into the discussion. And uh, w one point uh, in the introduction round I already found uh, very interesting. Um, so Sebastian, you said like that you're heading to say like, um, community management becomes more and more uh, CRM, so customer relation uh, management. So is it that it's also like, is there still some, like, like the um, two departments, community management and CRM, or has it already become one in, in CRM? We, we are on the move to getting it into one department, yeah, because um, community management, as, as kind of mentioned already in the direction, is moving into a whole user journey. So we are there for the user since the very beginning until he might even turn from the game, but also we are about getting him back to the game. Yeah? So we do engagement, we do re-engagement, we care about the user from, from, as I said, from the beginning to the end. Hopefully there's never an end, uh, that's at least what we are trying. Also, since we are working on various channels, including, for example, email marketing, that's where um, the community managers or customer relationship mentors take care of, um, we're shifting to a different direction over time. Hmm. And, and when you say like with free-to-play games, there's often like a community which sticks very long to the games and then you have really like a long period of time to communicate with them. Um, so in direction of Caro and Sinica, do you feel the same if you're operating not on like free-to-play games, but like there are there's a release of a game, there are lots of questions ahead, and like there there's maybe some stuff afterwards, but is it like the same um, kind of connection to the players, or how long are you in contact with with the players and at which at which stages? Well, I can only speak from my perspective, but we are still very much in touch with the Witcher community. The Witcher 3 released five years ago, and we are still writing to them daily. We still write in the Discord. We still post on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere where you would post things. And the, sometimes I have the feeling the community is getting more and more active even. So as long as they are there, we are there as well. And for Cyberpunk, it's funnily enough almost the opposite because the game has been announced quite some time ago. And it's almost it's awesome to see that people are still sticking with us and that it, and that they have been sticking with us for years. And now, of course, the excitement is getting very strong, let's say. Um, but I agree to the point that you have to get community on board as early as you can, as you reasonably can, and then be there for them. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. And um, maybe in direction of Seneca, so when you have like released one game and then you're as a smaller studio, you're up to the next game. Um, do you think a lot about like, okay, we, we build up a community. And so when we would go into a completely other direction, so how many of these players could be transferred to the new game or should we stick to the genre also 
because we know what, what our community likes at this point. So is this something um, you're thinking about a lot? Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, we've had our community for, for a couple of years now since our Kickstarter. And uh, it's, it's probably, I mean, it's the first time that I'm taking care of a community, but I'm pretty sure this is the nicest community <laughs> anyone could ever have. So uh, yeah, I'd like to make sure that our next project is, yeah, it's the right one for them as well. Um, yeah. Probably not going to be super, super similar because we also don't want to bore people. <laughs> um, yeah, but we're definitely thinking about what, what would be right for, for our community. Hmm. Sebastian, uh, you mentioned that you have been in the industry for a couple of years. Um, would you say that the importance of community management has in some way shifted or changed in the past couple of years? I would say it never, it kind of, kind of never shifted. It was always important to take care of your, yeah, I will say customers in that case, because it's not only about gaming industries, about all industry, industries out there, because um, if I don't care about my customers, yeah, they will probably never buy a product again, not stay in my product, in that case, stay in our games. So it was always important to care about it. Hmm. Especially in the games industry, I guess. Do you think there's uh, anything special about um, communities inside the games industry? I don't know if you personal are involved in any community outside the games industry, but I, I think the um, I would imagine that the involvement that gamers have for their community might be even more intense than in other industries. Um, well, I would say it depends there, but yeah, gamers are really driven by heart. They like what they're doing, they like the products, they like to play, they like to have fun. And there's also social engagement uh, between them that give a lot of boundaries where we as community managers also have to take care of, yeah, because sometimes we're kind of involved in some of boundaries here and there. Um, but it also can happen in, in other communities outside of the industry. Okay. Also, if I may act, we have, we're at an intersection of different communities, right? At, at least with our games, we're at the intersection of the cosplay community and of the artist community and of the LARP community and of the role-playing pen and paper community and of the board game community. And it's a, you can't really say games community versus other communities. I know it wasn't the intention, but we are basically a melting pot of creative communities, which is excellent to me. Also, because it's the coolest thing to see what people can come up with and what they build about your game and what they what they craft and also the kind of detail questions they sometimes ask for cosplays where you're like, oh, okay, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's also something I had in mind, like um, maybe The Witcher is like an exceptional game because there's so much content in it. But it, when you would look like at smaller studios, there will be the point, okay, maybe um, the game is like five hours long or something like that. And then there's basically end of the content. And so you have replay uh, value, but like the next step then could be that, that people are doing like fan fiction or cosplay uh, or something else. So is this something where you also um, thinking about ways to, yeah, to excel it so that you, you have like special challenges for your community or that you give them like, like, like prizes or is that something where you would say it, it happens or it, it, it don't happen because like maybe your, your game isn't the right one um, to, to build up such a community. I think there's no wrong game to build up a community. I think it depends on the heart and the, the quality slash passion of the team behind the game and not about the length of the content or the scope. That being said, yes, we do some challenges and contests and giveaways, of course, to keep people engaged. Um, but I will give the floor to someone else because I've talked a lot. Yeah, so um, maybe like we, we do a lot of those things. So um, say Trove, for example, if you know Trove, it's like this um, bit like Minecraft, but it's free to play um, and the art and dedication of this community is like, it's unbelievable. Like they have their own page called the Trovosaurus where they have 
like everything in there and the amount of artwork that they produce even without us actually giving them a challenge is, 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 is it's, it's amazing i mean they 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 build their own things like we integrate things that they build they can create their own mods um same same for say fiesta online um there are a few cosplayers who dedicate so much time into recreating um certain armor pieces or, or weapons and 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 you know and they'll they'll wear them to cosplay events or the um what's it called uh, the the gamescom and and also to the gamigo party which we usually hold every year unfortunately this year we could not due to obvious reasons but like they they will you know spend money and and time and they are so creative and we do you know try to um, create surroundings for them where they can express themselves like that, even if they are not the, the best artists or anything, because it doesn't matter. Like, that's what the gaming community is so special about, is that they are, like, they go into this world and they live in it. Like, sometimes it's a bit dangerous because they're so into it that you're like, dude, you know, there is also normal life. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's kind of um, astounding how people can, you know, go in there and, and then live this live this by spending their time creating art, um, thinking about what they would like to see in this game or what they don't like, you know, sending us concepts, art concepts, all kinds of things. So we do, you know, we do events where they can um, show what they can do. And even if they are not the most artsy person, they have still good ideas. So we let them write stories and, and, and everything. So it is a, I do feel it is a bit different to other communities. Like the only place I see people similar to our communities are maybe, you know, fan bases of, of, of certain artists or, or for series and, and, and actors and everything where they, you know, write fanfic and create art and stuff. So they do the same thing for these games. Hmm. And, Sounds and like all. you're someone who um, really loves their job, which I think is awesome. Um, uh, we do have a couple of people here on the call um, who said in the survey that they are not working community management management right now, but they um, wish to do so maybe in the future. Um, so for them and also for me, who's not working in community management, um, can any of you just describe what... Um, uh, what a typical workday would look like for you. I think in, in the gaming industry, there's nothing like a typical workday, but um, maybe just give us a little bit of an insight um, what's on your to-do list on uh, an average day. You can see that it's a tricky question that no one volunteers to answer. <laughs> <laughs> it is. No, I, mean, I, 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 can, I can volunteer to answer. So, I mean, I, I was just, I was community manager for a long time before I... Um, moved to team lead so like when i was just taking care of this one game um uh, my day would start with checking my emails checking what was going on what needed to be done for that day checking all my private messages on the forum checking my messages on discord getting back to the players because i made it my rule to answer them every day so that they do not need to wait on me um, I would create announcements, I'd write text, I would create um, images for these announcements, I would go and set up server announcements, I would plan events um, from having a new idea, going on test server, seeing does this idea work or not. Um, I would spend time with my volunteers, um, with whatever they needed from me or they were giving for me. I spell check other people's things um, because we are a big team of different people with different language sets so everybody pitches in where needed um, so that was that was just like community management and, and now as team lead obviously um, I am not um, creating that many <laughs> announcements anymore I'm not taking care of a community anymore but I've kind of shifted to taking care of the community managers. So I'm like the community manager of the community managers. <laughs> so um, um, I still kind of do the same thing, just not uh, in the game, but in the company. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like I, the others will probably agree. You can go on and on and on with tasks that you have from minor projects to daily business. It's very, mm -hmm. um, very vast. <laughs> 
Yeah. So just to chime in and add some things, because also community management is very different depending on the company, depending on the size of the company. In our case, for example, we're also working on high level plans. So we've been working, of course, more than like some weeks on the plans for how we want to communicate the games, what we want to do, when we want to launch, which contacts, uh, contests, what we could connect it with. So you would have those high level things that take a lot of project management pre-planning. In normal years, you would also have events, which we didn't have this year. And very like micro level things like having Twitter open, checking your hashtags, checking the forums, checking the needs of the players, being in touch on Discord for all the games. Um, also in our case, translations, proofreadings, updating the website. So it's not really, a, at least in our case, there's no one typical day, except also the same rule as you have. Players shouldn't, in my case, not wait longer than a day to get feedback on Facebook, at least to a DM. Sometimes if it takes longer, I feel very bad already. <laughs> so, I guess it, it looks quite different in, in your team because your team is far smaller than, um, oh, yeah. uh, than Good Game <laughs> and <laughs> CD Projekt Red. Yeah, that made me feel kind of bad just now because... Um, Good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as I said, I, I love our community and it, it hurts when I know I've I've left them waiting for a week or maybe even two um, because we're all doing several jobs in the company as we're only five people. Um, so yeah, it can take one, two weeks um, if I'm busy because, because right now, um, the last couple of weeks, I've been testing the Switch versions a lot because I'm also QA. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Daily answers to questions on all the platforms. Not possible, unfortunately. <laughs> that that um, just shows that we are different sizes and that there's no one size fits all yeah. for community yeah. management. Also, yeah, also, my experience it is um, in the way I've also been um, um, kind of, I would say, my, my traineeship in the industry after that, I had my first job as a community manager, and it was a startup, yeah, so it was very different there, yeah, you were uh, even helping out then on art creation, you did some performance marketing help, you had the project managers, there was something up, yeah, um, you take care of support tickets, you were taking care of social media, when there was a convention, for example, like the Gamescom, we set up all our mobile devices with the games we need for PR. Yeah, We got everything packed into our van and drove with the van by ourselves to Cologne to set up everything for Gamescom. So that really depends a lot on the size of the company as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I think to be fair, like you can also train your communities. So like if they are used to not getting an answer as SAP, then they will probably also not complain. So, you know, uh, if you're taking care of a community who is, in fact, used to getting an answer within one day um, and a good answer at that, you know, not just a, hey, I noticed that you, you know, you wrote to me, um, then, you know, then you kind of have to continue on with that because that's what they're used to. That's their standard. And if you then, you know, fail to deliver what they are expecting of you, um, you know, you'll have to deal with the backlash. But for, for, for a, you know, a smaller company like you, I mean, your players know this, they know this, they probably know you, they know what you're doing all day long. So they're probably simply not expecting that. So I don't also don't think that you should, you know, feel bad about something like this because, you know, yeah. and, and, and <laughs> you to, do not have a dedicated <laughs> community manager. So obviously. Yeah. And to pick up what was written in the chat, one thing that's important also for me is boundaries. Like, I do not respond to messages after my work hours, because if I did, I would never stop. Because Twitter doesn't sleep, Facebook doesn't sleep, so it's important to not be available 24-7. Yeah, you, you kind of need to... I, I, have a, I have a lot of troubles with that still. So, <laughs> like, it can be Sunday afternoon and I'm just, you know, checking Discord for no reason whatsoever, and I notice something and I'll go like, you know, but and then like, I'll stand up and go to my PC. <laughs> I know, but for example, my Discord is actually very good at sending me home. Like, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Please go. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> 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 
But on the other hand, you have that idea that you have to jump in on weekends as well, weekends as well obviously. Uh, there are, at least at, at a free-to-play business, I'm pretty sure it happens at Camigo here and there as well sometimes. A server is down on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, you may be chilling in the garden, yeah, um, looking at the sun, yeah, and then your phone's ring is like, oh, we have a big problem, something crashed completely. We have to look into that. Uh, yeah. So there's another way around that. We have to deal with that case and that scenario in that very moment. Yeah, well, of course, it doesn't apply to alerts and emergencies and <laughs> something leaked that doesn't apply to that. Yeah, like we have different systems for, for this kind of thing. So um, if I do notice this, then obviously I will react and, 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 and do whatever is necessary to have these servers go back up. Um, but thankfully, we have, you know, um, created a system where even if I do not see it, um, I do not need to fear that the server will start, just stay down until I find my phone somewhere in between the sofa. Um, so um, it isn't as bad as it used to be, but it's like you're, you're the point of contact. Like if you do not notice your players um, saying this or your volunteers saying this, then IT is not going to notice. <laughs> you know, so you kind of have to, like you don't need to be available 24 seven. And I think depending on the issue, it is fine to also just say, okay, somebody else can handle this because you do need to take a break. But if, yeah, if servers are, servers are down and you're noticing, then you should be, you know, going to your PC or at least informing somebody who can take care of it. And also, um, we heard that there's a lot of channels you're scanning all the time. So, so you mentioned social media, and there's also like website, uh, forums, Discord. But if you would have to prioritize and say like, this would be like the top three channels which are most important for you, um, maybe to get a feeling of like how the community mm -hmm. is thinking about uh, specific things or where you think you get like the most out of your time interacting with the communities. So I would like to, to learn from you what would be uh, like your top three um, ways to interact with the community when we're talking about like platforms or programs. I would say that's a point of view topic even. There is a point of view from the company need and there's a point of view from the player need at all. Um, if we're talking about a player need, it's more or less also where the player is most active. It can also happen that our own channels may not be the ones to go. It may be a completely different forum where players are active or so even a third party discord or something. And that's where our players are care about, that we are there where they are active, at least. Yeah. On the other hand, there are company needs, like um, I've been speaking about um, uh, email marketing. That's kind of a sales channel, because yeah, we are pushing out the information, what are the next events, what are the next offers and sales to come up. So that's something that gives us money, yeah, but also we provide information to players what they can get next. On top of that, it's a nice reactivation channel, but it's a company need, obviously, to get churn players back into the games. Yeah, so I think it depends on those two things and also depends on, on what is generally going on. So if we're talking about a game that has been, you know, been going on for, for a while now, there is nothing um, special or new going on right now, then for me, the most important place to be would be in the game um, in the forum or in the Discord, where the players are actually, you know, where they are, where they want to have attention. But say you're launching a new game, or you have uh, you have like a new new big content update or something, then yes, the forum is still important, but there you already have the people you want to have. So you need to you know spend more time checking your social media channels because um, for one you are putting this out because you want to get new people in and you want to keep them interested. So you need to um, maintain them a bit. And also if something goes wrong and there's like this huge shitstorm somewhere on Facebook, like <clears throat> this needs to be addressed like right away. I cannot, I do not have time then to go and, and check if I have a private message on the forum. Um, I have moderators for my forum. Uh, even for discord but uh, or in the game like if they complain in the game well tough luck it's going to be spammed away next time you log out it's gone but on on facebook it's very very global so you need to you know you need to be there so i i think it really depends on um, on what is going on and depending on what is going on decide on where you know where's the biggest fire where do i really need to be hmm. yeah 
It also depends on the kind of content you're doing, because for example, our community is quite spread out. So depending on what we want to launch, it could be either Instagram or even Tumblr, but it could also be Facebook, but it could also be Twitter. So it also depends on what do you want to talk about and which specific subset of your community is in this case most important. And also because it was in the questionnaire events, if I had to pick one thing, for me, it would be events to actually talk to your community face to face. Hmm. There's a comment so, in, the, in the chat from, from Robin. Yeah, that's quite, quite uh, the topic itself. Target audience. It also depends a lot on aging, for example. We have players, some of them are 20 years old. Some of them are even older than 70 years. Yeah. So they're obviously using different channels. For a 70 year old, the forum, for example, is still the main part where they go to because they know that since a couple of years already forums out there since 20 years, uh, they know how that works, know they get information there and done. While the 20 year old, maybe more on Facebook, maybe more Snapchat, maybe on Reddit, anywhere else. Yeah. Um, so that also depends a lot whom you like to talk to. And in a perfect world, we will be everywhere all the time, anytime. <laughs> but yeah, that, that is true. I mean, yeah, people say forums are dying, but like, I, I generally like forums a lot because you can, in fact, gather a lot of information. Uh, you can have all of these FAQs, which sure, you can also have on your homepage or, or on Steam or wherever. Um, but it's like, it's like your little home. They, you know, they, they live in there and they also create their own content in there and, and they can go back to it all the time. So, um, yeah, but yeah, young people, old people. I mean, I have people in my team even um, or, or the volunteers are like complaining if we do something only on Facebook because they claim they do not have Facebook. Where I'm just like, okay, you're not that old. <laughs> Yeah, they are they are all over the place. So technically, you need to be everywhere, but obviously that is impossible. And do you use like specific tools or some kind of like a certain kind of reporting to keep track of like what what's going on on the different kind of platforms and and channels and what are discussed where? So so how do you manage all all these channels? Right, for social media, we use Falcon. Um, it's a tool I, I to be honest, I'm not best at these. Um, so Falcon, I think, is provided by Facebook. I'm not entirely sure. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. But Falcon lets you add all your all your channels from Twitter, from Instagram, from Facebook. I think even YouTube, though I'm not 100% sure. And um, so you can create your content in there. You can set your content out there. You can monitor. Um, how many people have seen things, how many have commented, how many have reacted. So you can get really nice KPIs out of it. And you can also answer in there. So you can also prepare um, some specific answers which you can just reuse all the time because it's the same answer all the time. Like, hey, I've lost my password. I do not need to think about how am I gonna answer this player? I'll just go and look up my macro answer which says, hey, please go and contact support here. Here's an FAQ on how this works, the end. So this helps us a lot. Hmm. And uh, we just ran um, another survey about, about uh, like what tools and what channels um, are used most of. So maybe we can have a look at the results here. So everybody in this call, so Discord obviously is like top voted. Um, yeah, forums. You also mentioned like the benefits of forums. You have everything in one place and also you get a good feeling um, of what is discussed there because they are, you have like a good overview of what kind of threats um, your community uh, is opening themselves. Yeah, and then like Facebook, Twitter and events. Yes, the big thing in 2020, um, events. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so so maybe uh to to have like a short chat here so are you looking into some events at the next half of year where you think like in in, in the upcoming months um really thinking about events are you thinking about like what kind of online events can can you launch for your community i will give you a very community management answer i cannot comment on that just yet 
Yeah, same. It sounds I mean, also like PR. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the next half year, I mean, real life things are kind of out of the question until things clear up. I mean, we at Gamigo obviously hope that we can host the Gamigo party again uh, during the Gamescom next year. Um, so I, I assume preparations are already being made, um, though I'm not part of that team, so I don't don't really know. But other than that, I mean, we always have a lot of big things going on. I mean, they're gamers. They don't usually leave their house that often. <laughs> so big events, sure. Gamigo Party always gets a lot of people out. Um, but smaller things, I, I don't really see this happening in the next half year, even if I could to tell you. But also, I think, uh, Caro, you said it, like, if you had to choose, like, it would be events, um, yes. because, like, there's this, this direct interaction. Mm -hmm. And I also know it from what, what I did in the past, that, like, often it helps to talk to, like, 10 people and you get, like, a good understanding, like, like yeah. um, how, how they are seeing things. But how do you manage to, to get, like, a sentiment or, like, a opinion, which is true, like, for, for big parts of your community? So how... Do you get a feeling like what what do they like? Uh, what should be updated to the game? Like how do you manage this? Um, I would I would like to short do a short detour first to explain what I meant with events. Obviously, it's also dependent on the company. But last year, for example, we did a tour in Germany, Austria, Switzerland for our game Cyberpunk because we had we were at Gamescom. We showed the demo, and we are or also know that not everyone can go to Gamescom, not everyone can afford to go to Gamescom, not everyone can afford to wait in line for five or six hours. It's budget things. So we said, okay, so if in social media, we go where the community is, let's try to apply that also to events. So we actually created sort of a rock star tour and went to Ber Berlin, where well, that was a home game, but we went to Berlin, we went to Hamburg, to Munich, to Zurich, to Erfurt, and to Vienna, and where Cologne, to get in touch with players, to show them the demo, and that's invaluable. You cannot really replace that with, like, at least in my, my opinion, you can't really replace that with digital interaction only. That being said, we're now doing digital interaction only. Um, and we are tracking it manually, actually. We have a self-developed template for sentiment reporting where all of our community managers will check the channels, will check the analytics, will see what the most upvoted comments were, and, will, and then we compile it into a report and send it to whoever needs to see it and also collect takeaways. So what are the most important pressing issues, what should be addressed, what did the community like, and we do that by hand, basically. Is it the same for the others as well? Is it by hand? Asinika, I guess for you, yeah. <laughs> really report much. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know, I guess it's, it's a lot more fieldy with a tiny community and um, yeah, it's just a f yeah feeling what what they're up to what they like and uh, it's yeah it's not like we can just implement features the community asks for or anything we, we can just uh, yeah try and find the most pressing issues uh, to work on. And yeah, I don't really do reports because my colleagues are sitting right next to me. And I guess you. they do check the, the channels all the time. <laughs> yeah, as, as much as I can, yeah. Yeah. We are, what we are working with is quite often um, in-game service. So we are also releasing, yeah, kind of news content and announcements within the game as community managers. Um, while you're there um, on new features, updates, or on specific questions we have, we are releasing globally um, uh, surveys to get more information what the players want from their perspective. At the end, it's again then a kind of, we have our reporting we get from the forum, we have our social media reporting, we get our survey analytics, and on top of that, when we merge that with the in-game KPIs and data we get from our analytics team. 
and then the game team can make a proper decision out of it. Okay, what is the player? What does play players favor? And what do you see in the data? What they what they want? And kind of merging that together, we then come up with a proper planning what we would like to do next, or what what we like to update as a feature in the game. Hmm. And also, um, I think somebody of you already mentioned it. Like there is always a possibility. Um, there are so many reasons why it could happen, but let's say there was a shit storm um, and, and it starts at some point. And like, as I said, there could be so many reasons why in the player community, it's something like that happens. But can you give like an insight uh, what happens next in your company? Because like there is this big question how to handle it in terms of can we keep it uh, or can we take it down and uh, stop it there? Or like when we keep it public like what is our answer to it and um, so there are so many like variables in it I know um, but maybe like um, let's imagine there's something the community uh, really gets wet of um, so what would be the next steps uh, for you as community manager so what would you do in the first place in our case, we would firstly evaluate if it's a global or a local issue, because sentiment is very different depending on the market, sometimes at least. So we would get together and actually discuss, is it only applicable to Germany? Is it maybe a topic in the US and Korea and Italy and France, wherever? And if it requires a global communication, then we sit down and think about how to best approach it. In our case, what always worked and what we are always trying to do is being transparent. So also admitting when we do not have a proper response yet, but that we're working on it. And I think it's important that community can also trust you that if you say you don't have an answer yet, that you really don't have one yet, that you're not just playing for time, for example. And then we think of an answer. <laughs> and talk to the departments that we need to talk to. If it's a marketing issue, we will talk to the marketing team. If it's a development issue, we will bring it up there. It depends. We actually do have a question about this uh, uh, directed to Sebastian. Since we are using in-game surveys, are these anonymous or do you connect these to the player accounts and therefore their game time spendings, et cetera? We would like to connect that, but by now we run the uh, surveys uh, anonymous, um, there's a quite reason that's called GDPR. As soon as we connect them, we have to make the player fully aware that we take his data for further occasions. There And players tend to not answering surveys if we are telling them, hey, we are getting your data with that. Um, to get as much feedback as possible, we keep them anonymous and uh, drive more answers with that instead of connecting that completely. Um, without um, without learning too much on GBR topics. Uh, of course, we're not requesting a player name, email address, whatever, so there's no connection. The only thing we try to connect is you're talking at least no free to play business. It's the pay or non pay player. So we ask them, did you recently buy something or not? Oh. Yeah, it's kind of four letters of doom. That's true. Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> And also, as, as we stressed out uh, already, um, so this should be an interactive format. So what's um, like a certain part of the Game Starter events is always that we are talking about like how to get into this job and talk about like ap application and so on. Um, but maybe you can give us like a short answer in the chat. So would you like to stay us more on this like more advanced topics about community management at this point or should we switch over and, and talk a little bit about like how to get the job and um, how our experts would rate like uh, uh, would rate like applicants. Um, maybe you can give us a short hint here in the in the chat. And while we collect that, uh, maybe a question that um, refers to both to the more advanced as well as um, uh, uh, the job starters um, uh, to US community managers with some experience, would you say that there's some kind of um, personal features a community manager should have? What, should it be like a certain kind of person? Should they have a special degree? Um, what do you think is most important for someone who starts in this job? We're running the risk of sounding very emotional, empathy. 
like understanding what the players want and why they want it and understanding that sometimes a message that reads rudely is actually just a message of passion and you have to kind of do the double step of saying okay this sounds rude but it's just because they care and if you cannot do that it's not something you can really learn i think yeah so so for me like there 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 are two two types of things i'm looking for so one is obviously the personality for this so i i believe that if you are not connected to games in any way like you really don't care you've never played games you've never been part of a community i think you'll have a lot of trouble trying to get into this job because you will be missing um, a lot of the passion because you don't understand why people are so passionate about this so so that being said i still think that um certain skills or a certain skill set is still needed. So you, you need to be able to um, react fast. You need to be able to write text and you need to be able to write well. So like um, you, you will be writing a lot of the time. You're not usually you know, speaking face to face to these people. So you need to be able to type out answers which are smart, which will you know um, answer the question where you're not saying too much, you're not saying too little. So you, you, you really you need to be smart, you need to be on your feet all the time. Um, so writing is obviously something you need to do. Um, you need to, um, like knowing how social media works is like a small part. It's something you can learn, but I don't think you can actually learn to have passion or, or learn how to understand games. Um, I mean, I, I've seen this in the past already where, you know, people apply and say, well, well, I, f I play FIFA, where I'm like, that's awesome. I'm like, it's really cool that you play this game and that you have a passion for it. But I think you might be at the wrong place trying to be a community manager for an MMO because it's completely different. So, yeah, in general, when I, you know, look for people who apply, this, this is an important thing for me. <laughs> Which, when we come to the hard skills, what I would like to add is also project management. At least in our case, it's important to understand what a milestone plan is, to be able to set up a communications plan, to be able to actually also understand budgets, because at least in my case, I also have to handle budgets. Those are some things that are important for us as well, or at least to see that people have an understanding for it. Yeah, you know, for us, we don't need to know budgets, um, thankfully. <laughs> um, but yeah, project management, obviously, because you're not just sitting there answering questions all day long. You need to plan things. You need to organize your own team as well because you have volunteers. So you need to have good social skills um, because with those, you actually do talk to them and you need to organize them and you take care of them. So like I was joking about this when we were preparing um, this whole call, but like funny enough ideally i would like to have like a kindergarten teacher who is really into gaming because <laughs> yeah but they like they know how to plan a day they know how to you know keep people um uh, occupied and engaged and doing things they know how to break up fights and everything so like it's it's all of these things and more so like there's nothing you can actually learn and then you're bam you're the perfect community manager you have to be a community manager to learn to be a community manager I guess it's not that easy to find out about um, uh, those soft skills of a person when they apply. Um. Sell them in the application. So that's why I feel interviews that are actually face to face, you know, even if it's via Skype are, are, are really important. You can see a lot by looking at the person's face simply by like, <clears throat> if you, if you, if I don't see them and, and I ask them like, hey, how are you in, in gaming? Like I, I had somebody who, who claimed to be a gamer and claimed he had played this and that game and then and I was like this doesn't sound right and then when I asked a few more concrete questions he told me he was playing it on his iPad where I'm like the game doesn't work on the iPad like so <laughs> people people will lie because they really want to get this job and and it's really sad to see that a lot of people apply without having any clue whatsoever what the job is. So this is mostly the reason why I decline people because I can I can see in your application already that you have no clue what you're getting yourself into. And even an interview will probably not help. 
So our, our last event um, was, was about um, like game art and there was a big part about a portfolio and there were lots of questions about like how should a portfolio for game artists look like? Can you think of something, uh, Sebastian, um, like what should be included for, for perfect application as community manager? Should it be like a link to blogs, to text, to what would you say? That, that depends on what we're looking for and what is kind of described also in the job offer we're looking for. Um, we we are also kind of a self-service department, so we are creating own art, for example. And if somebody then comes up and saying, hey, um, we have one team member who is a tattoo artist, yeah, or from tattoo artist, who has quite a wide knowledge of Photoshop as well, because he was creating the, the tattoos in Photoshop first before he was painting it on actual people. Uh, um, so um, he was a very nice fit. Yeah, so um, he had some of his yeah tattoo port for you into that. So we are quite curious about to see that. Yeah. Um, one other stuff is um, yeah, it might be interesting if you have been kind of in contact with gaming and uh, maybe also with communities. Uh, Caroline uh, came up with an example before. If there is somebody who was, for example, a large community or the cosplay community in, design, in that job, that may be very, very worthy and interesting for, for the company as well. Yeah. On the other hand, um, if somebody um, has examples in his portfolio, like, okay, I was a, a proofreader, a professional one before. Uh, I'm a um, professional text or a Kubi writer, and it brings examples that can also be very interesting. Depends, there's not a perfect thing you have to add in your application, but if you have, like, say, extended knowledge, feel free to. Is there um, anything you would like to, um, to to let career starters in community management know before they start? Any insights you gained um, in your first years that you think, or if I had known this before, I would have um, done things differently? Um, okay. Seneca, would you mind muting your um, your mic because it there's some background noise? Thanks. Okay, so so for me, um, luckily I. I already knew what I was getting myself into when I applied because I had started as a game master for a game um, at Gamigo and that's how I came to even know the job. So I, I, I knew that I, I knew what I was getting myself into. But what I do do know a lot of people who start here um, don't realize is that it is in fact a hard job. So I have a lot of people applying and they think they will be playing the game all day long. They think they will be just fooling around all day long, which sometimes you can, you will be fooling around and having fun with your players. I think it is very important to also spend time and actually play the game so that you know what you are talking about. But a lot of people really think that they will come in, they will be community managers and all they will be doing is sitting in a chat somewhere or playing a game. And, and that is unfortunately not the fact at all. You really have a lot to do. You have a lot of responsibility. Like you're taking care of a community with thousands of players. You're, 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 you are responsible for all of them. So you need to, you know, you can be laid back to a certain extent, but you cannot expect that you're going to start this job and then you'll just be hanging around all day playing a game, um, not paying attention. You do not like, you need to be very, perfectionistic for I uh, don't even know if that's a word sorry <laughs> for for certain things like you cannot just slap a, a text down you need to think about why you're writing this how you're writing this it needs to be uh, you know it needs to be spell checked every image that you create um, you know me, needs to make sense with what you're trying to do so there is a lot of analyzing a lot of thinking involved you need to make sure that you're doing the same best thing for the company and also for your community which can be a really really hard balance um, so I, I get told very often that I'm I was too nice to my players and I wasn't nice enough to my co-workers I mean not because I was being mean but because I was making people's job a bit harder because I was you know trying to give everybody everything they needed which you just cannot do. So there are a lot of hard decisions in there as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think if, if, if there's something you want to do, do it, you know, apply, but be aware that this is not just hanging around because unfortunately a lot of people really do think this is and it's not, not at all, unfortunately. I don't want to make the job that I love the job. I really do. And I have a team of community managers who also really love the job, but it is hard work you're not getting paid for nothing. 
the others agree, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to follow up on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, maybe to just add one little thing, it's also important how you behave on your own profiles, on your personal profiles, because at least in my case, or in our case, players not only know, like, okay, this is the account for The Witcher, this is the account for Cyberpunk, but they also know, okay, and this is the community manager for this region. So you also have to be in your private time, very aware of how you behave yourself, how you behave online, what you, what you share on Twitter, what you retweet, what you comment on. You have to be always thinking about, okay, how can this be interpreted? And so it's a, it's a very demanding thing and it will change your online behaviors. Yeah, I mean, for us, luckily, um, we, we do put a high, I mean, for I, I remember when you talked about this, so for you, it was more like an accident, right? Yes. Um, so for us, obviously, like, I, this is why I'm also not saying on which game I was working, because I really, really, really want to provide, uh, you know, protect my privacy, because um, there will be people who think that they are, you know, you're then the star of the game. Everybody will know who you are. But believe me, you do not want people to actually know who you are behind your pseudonym because of exactly the issue that Caro has is that she cannot actually be a private person anymore on her own social media. So luckily, nobody you know, except for my volunteers, know who I am in private. And, and those people also do not have my private social media. So I can behave whichever way I like to, um, though I usually do behave well. But yeah, you, you need to be aware that you need to be really careful with, with protecting your own privacy because not every community is really nice. Um, unfortunately, the bigger the community, the older the game, the more you will have a lot of trolls in there and you need to protect yourself and also your volunteers from that. So, you know, you're not gonna be this private star somewhere. If you want to be that private star, then you also need to maintain your private life um, very, very carefully because everything you do will reflect back onto this game, onto your company. So I always advise to, you know, not tell too many people what you're doing or at least not for which specific game, Just just so that you actually can, you know, end your work and do whatever you like without having to think of any kind of consequences that your one tweet might have. You mentioned um, volunteers. So uh, Gamigo does work with uh, volunteers. Um. We have a lot of them. <laughs> um, yeah, so in, 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 my, in my unit, um, we currently have, I think, between 160 and 200 volunteers, take or yeah, take or leave a few. Um, yeah, they are they are extremely vital to us um, because they can help a lot. So if you're taking care of even more than one community, like you cannot be in the game all the time. You cannot do everything all the time. And with volunteers, you have people who love this game, who know this game, most of the time even better than you do yourself, and um, who, who really want to help. So they, they do a lot of different things and they are um, a huge um, asset to us and, and we love them. Like literally, they, they become family. Like my the volunteers I had, like, they're, they're my family. We'd even meet up in private sometimes just to do things. And um, so they are very, very vital to us. Yeah, and they provide a lot of help to to the daily daily business of a community manager, uh, also on the on the global landscape. Because um, taking care about twenty six or even more languages and uh, regions, yeah, it can be quite tough. And it helps a lot if they provide uh, their local insights. Yeah, what I get out of the community, what are the players' feelings over there, um, and as to that, they really become family. Yeah, mm. um, some of them are even there for years, and they put a lot of dedication and private time into it yeah and i would kind of they're burning for their game yeah and to help also the company as much as they can yeah i really yeah. appreciate a lot of work with those guys yeah i mean it starts just by like hamburg uh, Ham hamburg is a german-based company <laughs> Camigo <laughs> is in hamburg so we're, um, we're in germany and we do have um kind of, we also have offices in the us obviously but like you, you have players from all over the world and you, you cannot maintain them at 24 hours. It's just not possible. And by like, we have volunteers from literally everywhere. 
everywhere. And, and this just means that 24 seven, somebody is around and, and, and they're, they're just doing it because they like doing it. I mean, it's like, what, what, what else do you want really? And, um, so that, and then, yeah, maintaining a lot of different languages. I mean, just like Desert Operations and War Game had so many different languages from Arabic to, to Dutch, Swedish, everything. Like we cannot have that many people who speak that many languages, unfortunately. And with volunteers, you, you also have people who can actually, you know, spell check, translate and, and help you create things as well. I think my connection just froze. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's all right uh, again. And and what you say in 2020, it's like an, an urban myth um, that like th would be a good start to enter the industry, the games industry, by by starting out as like a volunteer or then community manager, and then move on to to other kind of jobs. So this is often something, um, yeah, w which I hear when when I talk to people, but I'm not sure if you would uh, say the same uh, in 2020, or is it more like back in the days, like start out as community manager and then I think it's on. still still kind of similar. So uh, if I read an application, I see, hey, you were a volunteer somewhere, you were a game master, you were a moderator, you are already being taken into consideration from my part, um, simply because you already have an idea of what you're getting yourself into. Then moving from community management somewhere else I suppose always depends on um, what your tasks are um, what company you work for what projects you work on so um, yeah I, I, I moved from game master to community manager to team lead um, but not because I was a game master but because I put in a lot of work and, and I think I do a good job but me moving on to say being a product manager or moving on to being customer support or whatever, like just skipping, uh, trying to be into in different kind of things inside the company. I, I don't think it works that way um, because you still need that kind of skill set. Just because you were a volunteer does not mean you're automatically a good product, a product manager or a good IT specialist or anything. You still need to have background knowledge, maybe learn something. Um, but being a volunteer generally is a good step in and um, looks really good if you're trying to apply for a gaming company in general. And when you can make sure to say on which platform the game is actually running. So this should also be like a plus then. And so, um, Seneca, have you thought about ways, because I talked uh, with, with another Hamburg-based developer and they managed to, to get like a super fan and he was so active in the community and shared trailers and so on. And then they ended up to, to hire that guy because uh, he, he makes all, all the trailers from now on. So is this also something you noticed in your community that there is some like uh, art stuff going on or like very creative people? Uh, yeah, totally. We, uh, we've seen some very beautiful fan art. Um, had some people that just from their posts on Steam, I was like, man, that guy would be a good QA. <laughs> um, so, yeah, through the community, you can prove uh, all sorts of skills that might develop into a proper job. Yeah, I, I also like it, it. It's a way to to the people to to also express themselves and then like using uh, IP or, or games, um, which they are very into it. And then like they, they spend their free time uh, free time on something they like and create amazing things out of there. So um, yeah, we we still have a lot of people here uh, in the call. We are very happy about that that we didn't lose you until this point. And uh, yeah, we would. Uh, look into your direction one more time and ask you if you have any questions at this point which you would like to bring in and you can do it by chat you can do it by switching on your camera or ask a question directly so please feel free to share everything you have in mind or you would like to add 
Also, any insights? I think um, a couple of you uh, are working as community managers as well. So um, share your thoughts with us. In the meantime, a short follow-up on the how to get into the industry topic. Um, I, I would say that it depends a lot um, yeah, on the company, on the situation of yourself, yeah, where do you come from. Um, I can just speak about for myself in that case. Um, I'm a trained chef. Yeah? So I was working around about a, a decade as a chef in, in several European countries. Uh, the only thing I went to the industry is, was I uh, playing games. Yeah. And there was a night where of my favorite game, uh, the service went down and I was then on the website of the developer and encountered, oh, they're looking for something called Game Master. Sounds interesting. So I applied there. A couple of weeks later, I got hired because I just was playing games. Yeah. So there are, it really depends a lot on the situation, on the very moment, on the company, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but there are a lot of ways to get into the industry. At the end, um, growing in that industry and um, yeah, seeing a lot of things, making more, making it to different departments, et cetera, is up to you. Yeah. Are you dedicated? Are you want to be there? Are you want to do maybe sometimes a bit more yeah, um, and focus on your job and do some, some cool stuff um, to get into the industry? So we do have um, a question in the chat. How do you wake up your community to engage with you? I write good morning in the chat. Yes. <laughs> Hi. I actually Hi. do do that every morning. And, and most of the time they're like, oh, hello, how are you doing? Um, but yeah, I think engaging them ideally would be with new content. Um, but I suppose we all know that can't happen every week. Um, but events. I think events are very engaging, um, be it on, on, on social media where we do giveaways or on the forum or by going simply in game, doing things with them. Um, that's very engaging for them. Yes, uh, same, same here. One thing that I noticed because our forums were, at least in the German, German community, were quite silent for a while because of course there's not a lot to talk about when the game isn't out yet for a stretch of time. And then it helps when you see their feedback and they see that feedback addressed, even if you might have not personally responded to everyone, but if they see that when they write something, people actually read it and report it to the devs and it gets addressed, that's actually helping because now more and more people are actually writing in the forums again, in my case, and sharing their experiences, sharing their wishes. And that's just from listening listening, writing down, commenting it in internal meetings. That's helping for us as well. Yeah, I mean, they just want to be heard. I mean, the yeah. best thing that can happen is they, I wish we would do this and this, and I already know yeah. that's actually going to happen tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and then you can go like, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I wish we had this one week later, you have it and you're like, yeah. Like, See, I listen, even though it wasn't my idea at all, and it's been planned for weeks now, but um, yeah. it's very nice to, to, to get that kind of um, <laughs> that fame for, for, for pretending like, yeah, like I, I love it. They'll go like, oh, Ehrenschwester, you know, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's another question um, uh, about fame. <laughs> um, Robin asks, how do you cope with your in-community famous famosity? I actually don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, when community members are getting more personal than uh, it is comfortable for you. Did that I, happen to you? I am very lucky that I have great moderators. And if they notice things that are not in line, they will step in before I even would feel this way normally and to me it, it happened a few times uh you know in private messages i mean they they all assume they know where i live which is hamburg which isn't that surprising because i work for a company in hamburg but i do have people like they they will you know they'll ask me and, and be like hey yeah i want to take you out i, I want to do this and that do you have a boyfriend um you know uh, are you male or female i mean i did tell them i'm female because like why 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 even pretend but um, I, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't received any um, um, pics of things I didn't want to see. But I, you know, there are people who <laughs> you have. <laughs> Carol's making that face. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, 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 I've received a few images of biceps. Um, but the, the important thing is, is to, to have your, you know, have your line. 
I mean, it, to a certain extent, depending on your community, it is okay to, you know, to go along with smallish things, you know, having fun, you know, as long as it is, as it is actually still fun. So you really need to realize where are your boundaries? Where do you want them to stop? So I'm not, I'm never going to tell them um, who my boyfriend is. I'm never going to tell them where I live. I will never tell them what hair color I have or things like that, because I do not want to um, have this go in a direction that I cannot handle anymore. And if people do get too personal, I feel I'm absolutely in my right to tell them this is too far. You need to stop now. And if you do not stop now, I will not cont I will not answer you anymore. And this is from being too personal to being really rude as well. So you'll get that as well. People being really rude and, and blaming me for everything that is wrong in their life, where I will also go and tell them like, look, if you want to you know, unload, I will listen to you, but do not blame me. And if you are being rude to me, then I will not answer you anymore. Mm -hmm. And we, we all have another question which fits to this topic. So that's not uh, the question on the personal level, but the question is by Maya. What do you do when conversations in your forum or social media become very aggressive, political or homophobic? So oh, then I get the ban hammer out. Yeah. So I, I, I do have my personal boundaries and we have a company policy as well. If someone is homophobic, is racist, is getting very political, sexist, all of the things you can imagine. I ban people. I tell them, yeah. I, I'm, if it's really bad, they're not getting a warning, you, you're gone. The yeah. same goes for people on Facebook that insult other community members. I accept when they are more aggressive towards us to a certain extent but I do not accept that between neck like, to another community member. When it's only aggression, I normally try to deflate it. Like I normally try to listen to, to now I'm missing the English word, uh, to, to listen to them and to make them understand and make them feel understood and then try to see if that helps. If that doesn't help, we normally it helps. So that's it. Yeah, we, have, yeah. we have also clear rules in forums, on social media, also on Discord for, I would say, the typical things like harassment, sexual harassment, politicals, homophobia, um, pedophiles, whatever. Yeah, um, whatever happens in that direction is more or less you're out. Yeah. yeah. Banhammer, gun, good night. Yeah. Um, if people are very aggressive, it depends a lot on the topic. If it's aggressive, more or less what Carolyn said, if it's aggressive towards us, there's kind of an extended red line how far people can go. Because yeah. it may be probably our failure. We designed something they don't like to. Something happened. We will, where they can shout at us, that's completely fine. Yeah. So they can blame us of things we are doing wrong. What we also don't like to, if they are very aggressive towards other members. Um, quite often, that kind of balance itself, because other people will jump into that and say, hey, stop being rude to each other. Yeah. Um, if that doesn't happen, we jump in and also we'll kick somebody out if this is necessary. Yeah, same here. N -n zero, uh, zero tolerance. Um, I, I mean, it's in our in our terms and conditions already. Um, I will I will even ban you if you just have a name which is racist or homophobe or anything. Like we do not take like we as a company we do not take sides in political ish, uh, matters at all because we are trying to create a world where everybody's welcome. And even though I do not welcome racist people, as long as they keep their opinion to themselves and out of the game, again, you are still somewhat welcome because you're not bringing your opinion in. Um, because I don't know, quite simply, you know what I mean? So like, I will not ban you because I know you're a racist. And the only reason I would ban you is because I know that you're racist because you have been racist in my game. Um, but yeah, this is also like you, you are gone and, and about, um, you know, fighting amongst each other, as the others have already said, um, if somebody's angry, they are angry. And, and I think it is fine to be angry. Um, I do sometimes tell people, hey, look, I understand that you're angry. Um, but you still need to, you know, you still need to be nice. You, mm. you can tell me what's not okay. That's perfectly fine. And I understand that you are angry and that you're kind of, you know, um, flipping out over this because this annoys you that much. But you still need to realize that you're talking to actual human beings and that they deserve some 
respect because I'm being respectful to you as well. But you, there are some that, you know, they will just continue on. They will learn for maybe two sentences and then they'll continue. So, you know, you, you have your, your, your scheme of warning, maybe warning twice, warning a third time, and then you're gone because mm. you just didn't listen. Another question out of the chat, my, maybe in direction of Seneca, because you're also part of the dev team. Um, so apart from qualities of the game itself, do you think it is easier to grow a community when players can identify to the game creators, like seeing work in progress, getting to know the team, et cetera? I, d I don't think I would say it's easier, It's, but I guess it's building different communities, like massive communities that are only waiting for the game and that are not really that interested in the creators at all, are different from, from communities like ours that are also, um, I was thinking earlier uh, when, when, when we talked about the downsides of community management or the hard parts of the job, um, I think it might be easier for people to uh, start with uh, smaller, more peaceful communities and work their way up um, because I don't think I am a natural born community manager at all, but our community has been the perfect start to, to get into it because they're so, so easy to talk to. And even if they're disappointed, it just takes one or two honest sentences and that's that. And they're back on our side. Uh, so yeah, that's probably the, the, the softest way to get into community management. Uh, in a smaller smaller team with a smaller community uh, where you also get to see all the uh, the other sides of the team more and and um, build up an understanding of how things you know click into uh, each other yeah did I even answer the question I'm not sure <laughs> I, I think so <laughs> And also it's nice to hear uh, about your community and that it's like so good behavior there. So it sounds yeah, like... Uh, incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah like and some, that's something which you build up. <laughs> yeah. And another question by Eduardo. Um, so he is referring to um, yeah, what, what went on uh, yeah, early this week. Um, Microsoft recently did a masterful job handling social media and its community around the league of the console. What would be the best way to handle a league with your community? Depends on the league. Yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> say this really depends. Yeah. I mean, we've had it that we, you know, we're gonna have this new pit in game and it was already patched, but wasn't actually released. And then of course you have your data miners who will go through the client and, and, and see, and then suddenly they were posting this new pit. Um, everywhere on the forums and I was like oh, you know thanks for destroying everything we did to build up to this but thanks for destroying months of planning Thank yeah you. exactly and and they don't realize that I mean what what happened then is obviously the you know the image was out uh, the, the, the info was out there wasn't really much we could do but you know just say well you know if you want to have more information then you'll just have to wait until we actually release it and then obviously the people who were data mining and posting this were banned because what else are you going to do? And, mm -hmm. and But for big other things like launches of new games or whatever, I mean, I thankfully never had to handle this, so I'll pass this question. No, but in, in some cases you also cannot comment. Even if you want to react or you want to comment, you have partners, external companies uh, attached to it, and then you cannot do anything. You just wait it out and continue as you planned. The, but as, as you said, it depends really on what is leaking and to what extent. And, yeah. Leaks can also have quite a bad influence on your, on your community mood and behavior, um, at least in free-to-play business. Um, let's say we're about releasing 
a new feature that is that is on, on some parts quite sales driven. Yeah, um, and um, players might a day before release a specific player group, an alliance or a guild or something is guessing. Oh, that is coming tomorrow. Even tough, we never told them. If they write in the forums or anywhere up, and we really release it like that, then other players will show up and tell us. How did they know about it? You're telling them stuff before we know, and then you break, they can prepare for it. And we're like, okay, we never told them something. They were just missing, but the other group of players is now blaming us. That's quite hard to defend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was then an educated guess by uh, some, some guilds there. So, um, yeah, let's uh, look at the chat. So more questions are coming in. Next one by Frederick. So how to define the critical moment before which you shouldn't be sharing things about your game? It's a balancing act. And also it's the most used word from today. It depends. It depends on the game. It depends on a lot of things. But you have to find a fee in our case, for example, the balance between being transparent and responding to needs and spoiling too much because for every person in the community that wants to see things you will also have the same amount of people not wanting to see things because they want to see something like unspoiled so it's tr tricky i'm sorry frederick <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so the last question i see at this point um, is something we already discussed uh, in some yeah, in some points, but maybe again, like what is from your opinion, the most important skill for working as a community manager? Um, a lot of patience. Yeah, because you're like, you need patience for your players. You will need patience for your volunteers. You will need patience with your company and, and, and everything that's going on. So like, yeah, you, you need these skills. So you need to be able to write, you need to be able to read. <laughs> it will be good if you can use a computer, uh, you know, games, um, and, and you know, and you have some social skills and, and things like this. But a lot, a lot of things can can be learned. But if you are very, very impatient, and, and uh, you know, cannot exceed, you will have to be patient with yourself, even if you are getting hurt. Um, that you also realize that maybe you need to take a step back and realize I cannot be the mother of everybody in this game at all times. So um, that that's one thing, apart from yeah, hard skills, soft skills that you go around with. But if you do not even have patience to wait on your next parcel to arrive from Amazon, then you know. <laughs> I guess it was mentioned in the chat, but empathy is usually quite important. Um, neither of the empathy if somebody is sad, if somebody is mad, but also empathy if somebody is in a good mood. Yeah. On the same side, you need empathy if your producer is running in circles because an update needs to be done and finished, or a developer is stressed out, or you're requesting something from an artist yeah, um, who has other stuff on its plate. Yeah. So uh, within the company, but also with your community, you need a lot of empathy, whatever you're looking at. And also on the chat, not uh, not so much a question, but uh, a comment, um, which I think is also important. Um, the question um, uh, whether you're uh, as a community manager, um, you are a part of the development team. Do you see yourselves at, as part of the, the, the development team? Um, I do not, um, because I do not develop things. Um, so I will help with testing things, which is QA. Um, I will help with giving feedback. I will help with thinking up concepts for things if I have the time and I'm also asked for it and I have a good idea. But I am not actually the developer. So no, I don't actually, see, I, I, I think we are a big team revolving around a game, but we are different departments with different responsibilities. So do devs belong to the team? Yes, of course they do, but I do not belong to the dev team. Again, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, I'm. You can go first because someone decided to get the trash from outside. Okay, I will, I will go for it. Then we kind of use your answer again. It depends. Yeah, there's again kind of a of a of a company need in that. Um, here, at GTS, for example, we are part of the so-called life ops structure. 
Uh, so there's a dev team. The dev team are the developers itself. They're developing programming things. There are balances with that. There are game designers with that. Um, there are um, analysts with that. Yeah? So there are already kind of a lot of small, smaller divisions within that development team, if you want to call the whole life ops like that. Um, and then it's really about depending on the company, on the size, what the company is aiming for. Nowadays, it becomes not only in gaming industry, but also quite often outside that the community management or the customer relationship management teams are um, self-service teams, very independent, yeah, uh, and working corporations with all the others around. Um, some community managers nowadays working closely with performance marketing teams because social media is so important for them. And then they're mixing up the content marketing they are doing via community management with the classical performance marketing where they're showing the digital and ads on social media and they kind of connected to each other. So there's a lot of dependencies, what a company needs, what is the community about? Yeah, different point of views on that. Yeah, if it's just about like casual talk, I would never call myself a game dev. I would never call myself a developer. But if there's a game dev meetup, I would still go. Like I, I feel kind of addressed as a part of a group around developing games, but I would never call myself a dev. If that makes probably doesn't make sense, but that's how it works. No, I, I think it does. I, I I feel I feel very similar to this. As I said, like we, we are a, a, a team. We are a team revolving around this game, caring for this game, everybody in their own um, in their own way, with their own skills. But yeah, in the end of the day, I, I am I'm not a developer. So Robin, by the way, is voting for Cynica to, to speak up. <laughs> At least it looks like. <laughs> oh really? I thought he just meant my microphone uh, noises. <laughs> um <laughs> uh, I was super surprised to, to hear your guys' response because um, it always gets me so annoyed when people treat uh, both uh, community management and QA like they're not part of the team. I think that's ridiculous and I'm super surprised that you don't even, yeah, it doesn't sound like you like you feel it's putting you down to be not part of the team or huh. well, maybe maybe we explained it wrong yeah, yeah because in, i think we're not saying it's less important or like it's just a different part of the team we're part yeah. of one big team but fulfilling different needs and fulfilling different roles so that's maybe we understand the word developer very literal <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we, we like we, we, we you know we're in, we're in contact with players who, who will tell us to fix something, like literally think that I will go and fix yeah. this. And then I always I have to say, <laughs> and then mm. I always have to say, hey, I will give that feedback to the developers. So that's where that yeah. comes from because I say you don't uh, because okay. I get feedback on Facebook, and I would say you don't want like for example stop posting and work on the game. I would say you don't want me to yeah. work on the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we have we have the exact same issue, and that that's probably where this comes from. Like, I I do think we are one big team, and you know we work together, and it's important that we work together, and every part of this team is is extremely important. But the, this comes from this community thing where I keep explaining to them that I am not a developer; I am a community manager, and as such, I manage the community, and I, you know, and I, I will forward their things and 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 whatnot. But I, I cannot go and fix this bug. I, I, I simply cannot. It's not. I can report it. I you can report. I, I'm happy to report it for you, but I cannot actually go and fix it. So this is, I think, where where this exact, you know, this this cut comes from because I am in fact not a developer, but I don't consider them not part of the team or anything. So sorry well, we for the misunderstanding. Uh, well, we probably should also clarify here a bit. We are no developers. Yeah, that's right. On the other hand, we have been sitting quite a long time together with the development team. We are still very close to them. I need. 20 seconds to be with the game balancing game designers or maybe 25 seconds to be with the developer if I really would have any questions. In former teams, I've been sitting within the whole development team. There were designers in front of me, 
yeah, QA in the back of me. Yeah, on the other side, there were artists. Yeah, 10 meters away, there were, there were front and back end developers. So there were everybody around. So we were one team. But I guess it's quite tricky to define what is a development team and what is kind of a supporting teams around the developers, uh, like VCMs are like marketing maybe, like business development maybe. There are so many parts that makes them the whole structure out of it. Yeah, and then again, you know, the bigger the company, the more you actually need to split up things a bit. Because like we have a development department which doesn't just take care of one game. You know, we have developers in the US, we have developers here in, in, in Germany, we have developers everywhere and and there are a lot of people taking care of a, you know a huge amount of games and they also need to be you know organized and structured in a way so we do have different departments but within one game obviously we have you know close ties to each other because we need to communicate in a good way to actually get to where we want to go um but but yeah we we like i for Seneca with being like, what is it, four or five people, it's completely natural that you're, you know, probably working way, way closer than in a company like Amigo with like 200 plus people where the whole organization needs to be completely different. That's also where, you know, where we go back to gathering KPIs and reports. Like obviously Seneca doesn't need to do that because who's she gonna report to herself? Whereas I cannot do this, like I need to report to to my bosses. I need to report to a lot of different parts of our department, of our of our departments, of our company, who are not all completely inside this one game. So yeah, a lot of things really, really depend on, on where you come from, and that's probably also why players insist on thinking I'm a development because they probably came from smaller games as well, where the community manager probably also was the developer. Yeah, that's I would, not, mm -hmm, though, uh, sure. I think where my allergy to that you're not part of the team comes from is actually from uh, from the bigger companies before that. I, I worked for Good Game for four and a half years uh, when they were still around a thousand people. Um, and some team that we worked as QA back then, we worked with all of the te dev teams and some of them were very welcoming to us and some were like, oh, you're just these guys who always complain, like, please no, you're not part of the team. So that's where that came from. Uh, but I totally understand where, where your point of view came from when you said you're not developers, yeah. At this point, I would like to bring in uh, one last question uh, out of the chat, um, which I like very much. So um, do you get inspiration or are you interested in the way other game companies handle community management uh, and communication on social media? Yes, yeah. uh, a lot. Um, I will watch all the conferences. I will follow a big announcements of comparable companies especially, just because I want to see how do they handle things, how do they react to things, what is working for their company, what might we be lacking. Um, also, um, and I mentioned it when we talked earlier in this group, not only gaming companies, because if gaming wants to grow and gaming wants to stay fresh, you also have to look at what do other companies do, what do other industries do. If it, That's one of the things we didn't mention before, but I think it's very important that community managers are curious people like interested broadly interested in different things because everything you consume can enrich you and how you plan your communication maybe there's an idea in okay now i have to be careful what to say um there's an idea in a very very different industry that you see happen to see on social media because you like said industry and you have a like a moment of like an epiphany where like oh, hell, that would work extremely well if we do this and this for our game as well. So I think, yes, it's extremely important. Yeah, I, I suppose, that like, I mean, that's how the world works, right? Somebody has a great idea and people will siphon off it. And, 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 and it should be like this because you will not have an epiphany every day. It just will not happen. But other people might, while you are not. And, you know, their ideas can be used for you, like obviously not one-to-one -one the same thing, but 
you know, the same thing happens in art, happens in music, happens in everywhere. You get inspired somewhere. And if you just stay within your own four walls all the time, you will not be inspired and you will be doomed to repeat yourself and your, in whatever you're doing all the time, therefore boring other people. So not only are we interested, I think we actually need to do this as part of our job to get inspired, to create new things and, 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 and you know, stay on top of things because just repeating the same thing for years and years and years even if it was a good thing, doesn't mean it will stay a good thing forever. Um, so getting ideas from other companies with other smart people having smart ideas is also a very smart move. Probably, probably if you're talking about skills of community managers, thinking out the box and looking over the plate are also very important skills uh, that a community manager should have and to be able to care of. Um, speaking about that topic specific, obviously we are looking what other gaming companies are doing but looking what other brands globally are doing in other industries like Nike, Coca-Cola, car manufacturers, Mercedes-Benz is doing a lot of interesting stuff as it comes to, to yeah, ways of communication internally to the outside, but also consuming feedback they're getting from the outside. Um, so it's really interesting what immersive job other companies are doing there and um, the, gaming, uh, the gaming industry can benefit from what is going out there. Okay, then at this point, I would like to thank um, yeah, our experts for today. Um, big thank you also to everybody who joined us here because um, yeah, most of you stayed with us for all the time. So thank you very much also for your interest here and for, for the nice uh, things you wrote in the chat. Um, at this point, two more things. Um, first, um, yeah, please um, feel free to join our Discord server. There's also this Game Started channel. Uh, feel free to ask questions there. Get in contact with everybody who joined tonight. And then second, uh, we would like to stop the uh, record of, or, or yeah, stop the recording at this point.